325 in the morning here in my world. Uh, but the our brand new little bundle of joy here, Cooper, was just born on December 1st, and he is doing the newborn baby thing where he just doesn't want to sleep. So he uh, just wants to be awake and looking around and have someone hold him rather than uh, laying in his crib. So we're going to uh, play a little game. Uh, I figured why not give a give a shot at a little bit of gaming here uh, uh, and where better place for me to start uh, my YouTube gaming extravaganza uh, than with EverQuest. Uh, EverQuest is a game I've been playing since the, uh, well, about 2000 probably. Uh, my brother got me into it then and I've been playing on and off ever since. Um, this uh, this is a server my son and I started on here, oh, I don't know, maybe last summer sometime. Uh, you see we got a few characters on there already, but I thought I'd, uh, I was ready to make a new one. I thought I'd walk through this character creation process here. So, um, you can see I've already got a couple. I've got a necromancer, a magician, and a uh, beast lord on this, uh, this account. I've got a second account that's got a few others on it, but uh, yeah, we're going to make a new one. So, I'm going to create a character here. And within EverQuest, uh, there are a, a plethora of races, right? They've got pretty much all, all of the token fantasy world characters. Uh, they've got the, you know, the barbarians, the really large humans, the dark elves, the dwarves, uh, the erudites, sort of the, the high intellect humans. You know, you've got your gnomes and your half elves and your halflings, your high elves, your humans, your Ixar or the lizard folk. Uh, trolls, ogres, who I did those backwards though, troll, ogre, your cat person, the venshir, they're called in this game, uh, your wood elves, right, sort of your tree elves, your uh, draken, sort of the, the dragon descended folk, and the uh, the frog locks, right? so just about all of your token fantasy creatures are here in one shape or another. Uh, now the it doesn't seem to affect the game that much anymore, but it was actually a fairly big deal back in the day. Uh, the world is sort of split into two major alliances. There's uh, sort of the, the good guy alliance of the sort of the good races, of the bar uh, which would be the barbarians, the dwarves, the erudites, gnomes, Half elves, halflings, high elves, humans, uh, wood elves, the venture are generally accepted into the the good guy races. I'm not sure if they are in the bad guy or not. They might be somewhat neutral, uh, but I think I think the venture are on the good guy side. Um, the draken, I believe, are fairly neutral. Um, and then the bad guy races, we've got the dark elves, the Ixar, the trolls, the ogres. And those sort of two major factions and alliances just don't get along with each other. They don't play nice. Um, now, in most of the newer content, and I guess for me when I say newer, that really means anything in the last, like, 12 years <laughs> is newer for me, I guess. Uh, but in the, the older, more original content, uh, if you were a, say, wood elf, and you walked up to the Ixar city, the city guards would kill you on sight. They would uh, uh, not let you pass, and vice versa. And Ixar is going to be killed on site in the Wood Elf City. Uh, but a lot of the newer game content doesn't focus around the core race cities. It focuses around uh, more general areas. So it, th that that aspect of the game isn't s as critical. Uh, yeah, you can you can not miss out on much. Uh, with almost any race. So, but my go-to, my favorite, has always been the Wood Elves. Um, I don't know why, but they have a special place in my heart. So I'm going Wood Elf, and I already got a bunch of casters, so I want to play a melee race. But, um, so essentially melee races for a Wood Elf, we've got, we've got Bards, which are interestingly a melee race. Uh, they can wear plate armor, they can dual wield weapons, pretty good. Beast Lords are, are a mostly melee race as well. Druids are uh, more caster. Warrior, Rogue, and Ranger are all uh, melee races as well. Or <laughs> melee races, melee classes. Um, but 
I don't like being slow when I'm running, and there's a, uh, a spell in here called Spirit of the Wolf that lets you run a little faster, uh, and eventually rangers will get that. So I was thinking I was going to do a rogue, but I think I'm going to go ranger. I think that'll give me, uh, uh, make me a little happier with it in the long run so that I can not be quite so slow. Uh, but I'm bald enough in real life, I don't want to be bald in the game here too. So let's find some hair. Oh, uh, there we go. He looks sufficiently grumpy. I don't like the white hair. Some teal eyes. Yeah, I like it. Alright, there's our guy. Now let's see. Let's see if they'll let me be Minnesota Dad. See if I can be that as a character. Uh, deities don't have a ton to do with things that much anymore. Um, there is a tutorial that you can run through, and maybe I'll run through that at some point, but I don't really feel like it right now. Like I said, I've been playing EverQuest for almost 20 years, so uh, I tend to skip the tutorial. Uh, if you guys want to see it, we could run through it sometime, but I'm going to skip it for now. Alright, let's see if the name works. Hey, there we go. It took it. Loading in. Now, back in the day, right, when, they, when, you know, they don't make things like they used to and all that jazz, but back in the day, um, every race started at their own city, so the Wood Elves would start in the city of Kelethin, and you'd go from there, but they changed that somewhere along the line, and, oh, I, I hear you, Cooper, yeah, Cooper's, make, Cooper's not happy that they changed it either, that's one of the changes in the game that I am least happy with. It really killed almost all of the older content. Um, but, I'll clean some of this up. Uh, but so now, you don't start in your home city anymore. You start here in Crescent Reach, which is actually the home city of the Draken. Um, but every everyone starts here, unless you do the tutorial, and then you start in the Mines of Glooming Deep. But it's still, everyone starts in the same spot, no matter who you are. So, um, we got various cues up here. This one here will open up our inventory. We can see what we start with. We get a lantern. Yes, some uh, races have dark vision, some don't. Um, and it does actually make a difference in what you can see and how, how uh, clear things are. Start you out with a sword, not a very good one. Sword, their weapons uh, have a couple of main stats to watch. There's a skill behind them, so this is based in one hand slashing, so slashing with one hand. Uh, and then there's a damage and a delay rating. Uh, and generally, the, the ratio of this is what folks are looking at, how much damage per... Uh, I don't know, the delay is milliseconds, maybe? I'm not sure. I, I, you'd think I'd know that by now, but <laughs> I guess I'd never check. Um, so, this is what it gives gives you to start out with. Nothing, not great, but it'll it'll do. Uh, it starts you out with some food and some and a skins of milk. You do need food and drink in EverQuest. It automatically eats them. You don't have to to force consume them. You can you can click on these to just eat them straight up, but you don't need it. You don't need to do that. It will slowly just eat away at this pile. And if you run out, it'll let you know, and then it starts affecting things like uh, regeneration rates such um, so but you can even get some foods that will boost your stats so you can get you know bear steaks that will make you stronger while you're eating them but so a few different things there um, these are your hotkeys across here the the numbers correspond with the the uh, number on the keyboard that you can hit to, to do that thing so for example if I want to forage I can hit number seven on the keyboard it will attempt to forage. It says, oh, you fail to locate food nearby. Well, I'm brand new, so no surprise there. That skill's not very high, but the forage skill lets you find food. Uh, like I just said, we do need food. Um, yeah, so attacks, we have a couple of different attacks. Uh, so if I just hit melee attack, it, uh, that will continuously auto-attack whatever my target is with my sword. I do need to be right up next to him, though. The range attack button will give you just a single range attack. It is a little amusing that the ranger doesn't start with a bow of any sort, so I'll have to find one of those eventually here, but 
Uh, and then I can add some other things. So, for example, I can add kick. So I can I have a kick attack. I can put that over on my hotkeys here. Um, I've got taunt, which will make the bad guy attack me rather than somebody else, which becomes important if you are in a group. Tracking is a cool skill. Uh, rangers get it. Druids get it. Not sure if anybody else does, but this will pop up a list of all the all of the uh, computer run things. So both monsters and NPCs, in the, um, and actually other players. So here you can see this uh, bard in front of me. That's him. Uh, but it'll pop all of them up. And if I wanted to say, let's go find um, here this grove snake right here. If I hit track, it tells me right there, straight ahead. So I can go straight ahead. I can chase him. It says straight ahead, straight ahead. I'm going straight ahead. And oh, now it's ahead and to the left. So I'll turn a little ahead and to the left. More ahead and to the left. I bet you this is the one. There he is. There's that grove snake. So now I can swing my sword, kick. And now, especially, it would be more important if I was in a group, but I can taunt. Uh, let's get rid of that. Move that out of the way. And you can see here's my stats. So red is my health. Uh, oh. Red is my health. Blue is my mana, which is used for spells. Yellow is my endurance. Ooh, so I killed the snake. I gain experience, and I can get loot. I can loot a snake egg. I can loot whole snake scales. And now, again, because I've been playing this a while, oh, Forge was ready to do again. Uh, there's a super convenient, especially when you're first starting, way to earn some cash. You type the command slash barter, and this will pop up a window where you can see what other players want to buy the things you have. So I know snake eggs are used in some of the trade skills. So here, here are three different people who are willing to pay money for this egg I just got. So if I sell it to, oh, let's pick a fun one. Uh, well, self-preservation. This one wants the most, so I'm going to sell to them to keep the most buyers on the market. So I sell that. So I just got three platinum pieces. Like most games, EverQuest is split into copper, silver, gold, platinum. Um, so I got three platinum pieces for that snake egg by selling it to another player. Uh, for reference, if I sold that to an NPC as loot, uh, like to an a NPC merchant, I probably would have gotten something like one silver piece. So I got about a hundred times more profit. Ah, and there's another one. So now I can barter again. Now, I could save these up and just sell them all at once. I can sell more than one at a time. But I kind of like to sell them as I get them, just in case whoever that is that's buying them decides to leave. So, anyway, this is uh, the basics, right? We made our ranger. We run around. We whack stuff. We can get experience the first handful of levels, at least. This is kind of kind of the thing. You run around you hit, and you whack things until here I'm so I'm 30% of the way in to, to level 1. So I'm going to run my way down here a little bit. Oh, here's another snake. Let's get another snake egg. Snake eggs are good. Kick. Taunt. Now, some things you, some skills you can't use while you're attacking. So if I try to forage right now, it says, oh, can't do that while you're attacking. And I'm too busy swinging my sword to look for food. I'll loot everything. Uh, sell that egg. So now that, but now that the battle's done, now I can forage. Uh, you get better at your skills as you do them. Um, pretty common for most games, I think. Uh, well, at least most games I've played, right? To get better at your skill, you got to do it. Uh, you can go. Maybe I can show you here in a second. So I'm running. There's a little path over here that you can follow. We'll, we'll show you what's up there next time. Uh, but I'll run down to this little hut. Um, there are guild masters. So in here, I'll find a ranger guild master who will, who I can build build my skills through them. Let's see, berserkers, monk, rogue. Cleric, Warrior, Paladin, Ranger. There's my Ranger Guildmaster. So if I right click on her, see now I can improve some of these skills. Uh, so here, let's see. My one hand slashing. 
um, if I open my inventory, one hand slashing. So I'm right maxed out on that already, so it doesn't make sense to do it now. But every time you gain a level, you get five practice points, and at a guild master, you can improve your skills through that. Uh, it's sort of an alternate way to to boost. Uh, and then all of so all all of these. NPCs say what they are. So this person is selling ranger tomes, which are like, uh, well, I'll show you. They're extra skills you can get. So like at level 54, I can use this one. Um, that let's see, strengthens your resolve, rendering you immune to fear, and various things. But they'll also have stuff that other people have sold to them. So this deep water black diamond. Some some other player sold that to this NPC. Just like this, I'm gonna sell. My snake scales. Sell that. Sell those. So I got an extra two silver or two gold, four silver, six copper from all of that. And you can use the money to buy various things. So if I wanted to, uh, just for example, here I can buy a small cloth pants with three armor class. So they can be used by any class. Um, high or wood elves, high elves. Dwar uh, let's see, dark elves, dwarves, halflings, gnomes, froglocks, I go in the leg slot. Sure, why not? Let's buy them. They're really not very good. So any of you guys that have been playing for a while, yeah, I know they're not. They really weren't worth buying. But just to show, right now I can equip them, and now I've got pants. It's good to have pants. Ooh, hey, look at that! I just did forage, and I got my first thing. I'm gonna put it in my backpack. I got berries. Right? So I can eat those. So once I'm once my bread cakes are gone, then I can eat my berries. So there we are. That's sort of the character creation. Got you about halfway through level one, and Cooper is now finally asleep. So I am going to leave you to it, and we will uh, maybe make another one. See, maybe the uh, what's a good goal for the next one? Get through level level five. Maybe. Maybe we'll see if we can get up to level 5 in the next one. Uh, but until then, cheers, enjoy, have a wonderful holiday season, and let's see if we can. Ready? Goodbye!